Hey guys, what's up? It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to take a look at all four of the epic quests in Marvel Future Fight, and I wanted to kind of quantify and answer the question of which one is the best, which one should you prioritize completing first above the others. Uh, now, as far as the epic quests go, you can definitely complete them all simultaneously, like you can, you can work on them at the same time. You'll eventually hit roadblocks in your progress, whether it's building up a specific character, or more likely than not with materials, whether it's Nornstones for a research, or Chaos Nornstones for a research, or Black Antimatter for a research, or the X-Men materials for a research, but uh, it's important to know which one you should be focusing more on if you haven't completed them all, if you're a newer player, or for those returning players who I know there are going to be a lot of with Endgame, um, if you may have, you know, quit the game before the Fantastic Four quest was, was uh, released, maybe you're wondering how good it is now, or if you you were just halfway through the Deadpool epic quest and then you stopped playing, you took a break, should you finish it, or should you move on to a different epic quest? So I want to answer that question. Now, I think the four most important questions to consider when considering the four different epic quests uh, are as follows. One is the strength of the main hero. The main hero, of course, being the one on the cover here, Doctor Strange, Wolverine, Deadpool, and Mr. Fantastic. Not really considering the native tier two behind them, uh, because the native tier twos are a lot more difficult to get. The Doctor Strange quest doesn't have one, um, and they generally don't, you know... You're gonna, it'll be a long way for most players between finishing the epic quest and finishing the native tier 2, i.e. getting them to level 60, 6 stars, or even for some cases, level 70, uh, 6 stars. So it's really a big gap, so you really have to focus on that first initial value of the character that you get, and plus you unlock them at 1 star anyways as soon as you start the quest as a new player. Um, the second question is uh, also the strength of the main uh, deluxe pack character. Now again, Doctor Strange Epic Quest does not have a deluxe pack or deluxe pack character, but we do have Magneto with the Mutual Enemy mission. Uh, for Deadpool's quest, we have Psylocke with the Beginning of Chaos mission. And then with the Mr. Fantastic uh, Epic Quest, we have Invisible Woman Sue Storm with Doomsday. Now, you don't necessarily, you don't need these um, deluxe packs to finish the Epic Quest in order to unlock the character, but they do help tremendously. They add additional value with, you know, farmable stages. And even though it's a pretty high crystal cost, you'll definitely get that, val that value back not only through the epic quest because you get additional rewards by completing the story here, um, but also through you know that character and through the, the stage that you can farm every day for materials, whether it's X-Men materials or it's other materials, uh, depending on what drops in the stage. Uh, and just in case you have this question, yes, you can complete the epic quest and then go back and purchase the deluxe pack, and then it will automatically give you all of the deluxe pack rewards automatically. You don't have to play the epic quest again, you don't have to do anything special, it'll just automatically um, award you all of those deluxe pack rewards. The third thing that you want to consider for the epic quest, and that I considered, is the cost to finish the epic quest, because it's really important um, to recognize that some epic quests are more expensive than others, and then that weighs on you um, as, a p as a potential decision for whether or not you want to try and finish it. The fourth thing, and I think the last important thing, is the strength of the native tier 2 character. Again, Doctor Strange's epic quest does not have a native tier 2, so his kind of falls behind in most categories, as you'll see, and that's kind of to be expected considering it was the first epic quest and Netmarble wasn't really sure how much content to put into it, um, and so we're just comparing, of course, Jean Grey for the Wolverine epic quest, Strife for the um, Deadpool epic quest, and then more recently, Doctor Doom with the Fantastic Four epic quest. The fifth one that I want to touch on just briefly at the end is the other characters. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's take a look at the, the, the main characters of each quest. We've got Deadpool, Wolverine, Mr. Fantastic, and Doctor Strange. In terms of their individual value in Marvel Future Fight, considering the possibility of uniforms, considering the possibility of Tier 3 and Level 70 and Gear 25, they're pretty similar. Uh, they all have uniforms except for Mr. Fantastic. They all have the, the, the possibility of getting to Level 70, Gear 25, which is nice. And they all have the possibility of being Tier 3, except for Doctor Strange. So there's pretty uh, equal balancing for all three of these characters. However, in terms of their value, in terms of their impact on the game, it's a pretty, uh, you know, different story. Deadpool is definitely by far the number one uh, main character out of the four, uh, and it's not really close. He's extremely dominant for PvP and PvE. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know 
uh, he just dunks everything. After Beyond Deadpool, it's a, it's a pretty big drop, to be honest, but the next one up would probably be Mr. Fantastic, just because of his value uh, in PvE and the fact that he doesn't have a uniform yet. So he could really transcend and become a two-way character like uh, Mr. Fan like Doctor uh, like Deadpool. If he got a uniform, he could become a PvP threat. Part of his Tier 2 passive is defensive, so if they improved this um, and they made it better, he could definitely become a Strife counter, even though he has the type disadvantage, because he's immune to Fracture, which is a really important uh, effect that we don't see very often. After that, we've got Wolverine. Wolverine and, and Mr. Fantastic are pretty close, so I would kind of call them like 2A, 2B for best uh, main quest character. Wolverine, obviously a lot more defensive than offensive, but still one of the best PvP characters in the game right now. And then, of course, that means rounding out the rear, we have Doctor Strange. It's, it's really not a surprise. He doesn't have a Tier 3, so it's difficult for him to compete with these other three characters. And he has an older um, skill set. While it is still very unique and quirky and, and has some very powerful effects, um, you do see kind of the punishment that he gets from not being able to proc a specific skill on an obelisk for a damage proc, for example. Um, and it's held him back from really being a dominant force in PvE, although he's still relevant in PvP because of things like, you know, an unlisted iframe ignore skill on Rings of Ragador, which is bullshit, but it's pretty cool that he has that. So I do imagine that he'll m better compete with these three once he gets his tier three, but until then he's definitely the worst of the four, but definitely not a bad character by any means. Uh, moving on to the next question, the strength of the Deluxe Pack. For this one, we don't consider Doctor Strange, so we just consider the three epic quests. It's pretty obvious if you've watched uh, my recent coverage of the Fantastic Four, Doomsday. By far the best Deluxe mission. Um, but I think Invisible Woman is also the best Deluxe Pack character. Now, yes, Magneto can get to Tier 3. He does have a uniform, so he has a higher potential than Invisible Woman. But if you don't consider that, because it becomes pretty unfair if you do, um, she's by far the best character. She has all of the same meta-defining effects that Psylocke has, in addition to all defense down. Uh, she's got self-buffs. She's a very, very strong character, and she synergizes really well with the rest of the Fantastic Four. Um, and her mission is just by far the best one. Now, it's difficult to compare the the quest itself with the character, um, but Netmarble decided to make it easy for us. They gave us crazy rewards, four and five star ISO and obelisks, which are super rare and, and you know, very valuable. And then these extreme boosts, these are really only farmable from timeline battle once per week and twice per week from Shadowland. So before this quest, we were getting three per week as a guaranteed farming. Now we're getting an additional two per day. So if you think about that, that's an extra 14 per week where we were, where we were originally getting three. So they bumped up the occurrence of this extreme ISO boost uh, by like 500% almost, it's insane. Uh, that value cannot be uh, understated. So 100%, no doubt in my mind, the Fantastic Four Epic Quest has the best deluxe pack. After that, it's probably going to be Psylocke, because again, unless you consider a Tier 3 Magneto with a uniform, Psylocke is way better than Magneto. And even for most PvE content that's not Alliance Battle, Psylocke is as good, if not better, than Magneto, uh, even with a CTP of Rage on him. She's just that good. She's got you know, pretty much everything except healing. Her survivability is a bit weak, um, but overall, she's a very, very strong character. And then that leaves, of course, Magneto for number 3. Moving on to the next question, the cost to finish the Epic Quest. Here's where Doctor Strange shines. He actually has the cheapest cost to finish the Epic Quest. Unsurprisingly, Netmarble didn't want to, you know, overwhelm us with the first Epic Quest. So if you're just looking for the fastest possible route, the Doctor Strange Epic Quest is the one to choose for you. In case you also have uh, additional questions, because I don't want to, you know, talk about this too much because it's not really that important, um, you can always refer to my guide where I list off the the main costs, the, the more expensive uh, aspects of the uh, Epic Quest from the native Tier 2 ranking um, page. And so if you go over here and you scroll down to the bottom, you will see that it lists them out from cheapest to most expensive. So just taking a quick glance, of course, Doctor Strange is the cheapest, then Wolverine, then Deadpool, then Mr. Fantastic. It basically just follows the actual layout of the Epic Quest. So if you're ever just wondering which one's most expensive, it's the one on the left. Which one's the cheapest? It's the one on the right, my dude. And then the ones in the middle are pretty similar, but, you know, it goes cheapest to more expensive because Deadpool has to one-up 
weapon X. It just has to be that way. Moving on to the fourth question, the strength of the native tier twos. Now here again, Doctor Strange does not apply. Poor guy. Uh, they need an update for that epic quest. I wonder if anyone's made a video about that. Maybe with a concept art for Brother Voodoo and Shuma Garath. No way. That would be a great idea. Anyways, uh, we're considering here Jean Grey, the former best character in the game that Reddit still thinks is the best. Uh, Sh Strife, also known as Scarf or Scrap. And then Doctor Doom. This one's a little bit tougher. Now, Jean Grey is, n in no doubt in my mind, at this point in the game, the worst of the three. Again, not a bad character. A very good character, but compared to Strife and Doctor Doom, who can get to level 70, gear 25, she is the worst. So that means Jean Grey goes to third. Second and first is a bit more of a, of a, of a question thrown up in the air. If you're talking PvP, you're probably going to want to side with Strife. But a lot of people have success with manually playing Doctor Doom, and he has a lot of the value that Strife doesn't have for PvP. He has self-healing, he has revive, he's got a lot of meta abilities that Strife doesn't have, um, but he is a lot less popular, pretty much non-existent for things like Alliance Tournament. On the other hand, for PvE content, I do think Doctor Doom is better. He's more flexible as a universal type rather than as a blast type, so you can kind of um, get his damage reduced less by different battles, and especially when we finally see the world boss stages being opened up to some of the other typings, you will see additional value from universal types rather than blast types. You know, uh, Strife is going to have a really hard time clearing Quicksilver's world boss, and he's not going to have an easy time either with, uh, what's her name? Scarlet Witch and Cable, because he has the same type as them and because there's energy reflect here. Dr. Doom, on the other hand, yeah, Energy Reflect is a problem, but he doesn't have a type disadvantage or he doesn't have a damage reduction against any of these world bosses. It doesn't matter as much for the left side, but it does matter for the right side, and it also matters for any additional world bosses that they decide to add, if they ever do, who are not universal. So you have to consider that. So I would kind of just say, you know, 1A, 1B, uh, Strife and Dr. Doom. I don't really think it's a huge difference between the two or a difference maker. Last but not least, the other characters. Uh, in terms of considering the other characters that you can farm and that you get from the epic quests, um, it's interesting because uh, Deadpool's quest actually has the fewest number of farmable characters. You only have uh, Domino, Phantom X, and Colossus. Uh, whereas, I mean, if you if you we're not considering the deluxe pack character, whereas Doctor Strange actually has the most number of farmable characters. You've got Satana and Hellstorm, the brother and sister. You've got Mordo Wong and Ancient One from the movie, and then you've also got Clea added on. So it's it's kind of interesting in that sense. But even though Doctor Strange's epic quest has the most number of characters, those are also the weakest characters of the bunch, generally because. Once again, they can't get to level 70, gear 25. So if I was considering overall value in terms of strength, the, the, the Mr. Fantastic Epic Quest has the most powerful um, characters. You've got Victorious as the shifter, who is a, an amazing villain uh, and a great buff uh, leadership for Doctor Doom. You have Human Torch, who I fucking love because he's amazing. He's a very strong character. Uh, and then you have other good, solid utility characters like Thing with great supports. You've got She-Hulk, another great leadership. And then Crystal's actually decent, very good for Shadowland. She's got multiple uniforms. Really nothing to compete against those characters. They're, they're, they're far and away better than anyone else on this list. But if I had to, I'd probably put D Deadpool's second, even though he only has three characters, because Colossus is a pretty good physical counter for some of these annoying uh, physical meta characters. He's got a good leadership. And then Phantom X and Domino are decent characters who can get better in the future. Beyond that, we've got, of course, Wolverine's Epic Quest. I do think that despite the fact there are only four characters here, these four are better than the six, I believe, that, um, yeah, the six that Doctor Strange adds. Cyclops got a good leadership. Beast has a good leadership as well and a good passive. Storm has some use in Shadowland, and she desperately needs... Oh, never mind. Storm's fine. Uh, and then Rogue is... Honestly, Rogue's kind of bad now, too. Uh, and then finally, we come to Doctor Strange with kind of the weaker set of characters. But the, the, the set that has the most potential because there's the majority. If all those characters got uniforms, if they all got buffs and reworks and level 70, gear 25, they could be better. So I think given all of that uh, consideration, I think it's pretty easy 
um, to decide where you want to go. I think for overall value, considering all the characters, considering the deluxe pack, considering the main character, I think the first family epic quest is the best one in the game. Now, it is also the most expensive, so that's where your uh, budget needs to be taken into consideration. Do you have money to spend, or have you been spending a lot of time playing, and do you have a lot of resources saved up, or both? Um, in terms of value, if you want to kind of balance things a little bit, I think the Deadpool Epic Quest is probably the best one to start with if you're a little bit lower on resources, because it's not going to cost you as much, and there are fewer characters to rank up in general, and most of you already have Cable already if you're not brand, brand new players. And thankfully, we just finished the faction battle, which gives a lot of bios for Colossus, so it does expedite this process in general, and also expedites getting Deadpool, because you do need to get Colossus to 5 stars, um, and Deadpool is, of course, the best character. After these kind of 1A, 1B with Fantastic Four and Deadpool, I would say it's probably a toss-up, but... I would give the edge to Wolverine's quest because there's more to it. There's Jean Grey, there's Magneto, there's an epic quest, there's ways to farm for X-Men materials, um, and then of course that would leave Doctor Strange at last place. However, there is the consideration to make about having too many X gene farming locations. And this is kind of a weird thing, but I just want to throw it in at the end. If you don't have a lot of X-Men to invest in, like if you, especially if you don't have any of the X-Gene sub-characters like Gambit, Juggernaut, etc., uh, you may consider not getting the, the Magneto Epic Quest Deluxe Pack because you may not have the need for those extra Phoenix Feathers and Emcron Crystals farming every day. If you can find a use for them in the Shield Lab, spending them, that's great. Um, and this mission is still great, don't get me wrong, it's, it's awesome because you get like 20 Magneto Bows per day, which is super useful for, you know, ranking up other characters to level 70 or feeding to native tier 2s. But I just want to throw that out there because I do see people kind of complaining sometimes. They spent, you know, 20,000 crystals unlocking, you know, Doomsday, uh, Beginning of Chaos, and the Magneto quest, what's it called again? mutual enemy and now suddenly they, they don't have anywhere to put those feathers so i wanted to cover these epic quests i think it's a fantastic question thank you to whoever it was on twitch that asked me this uh, i wanted to uh, give you guys my take on it and then i want to hear from you guys hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of the content and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you again tomorrow take care